From the Maricopa Community College campuses to your home, this is Maricopa Now. Here are some of the stories you'll see. Desert dwellers are making their way into the classroom. Mesa Community College students are using DNA to research these reptiles. A great view of the night sky for these Scottsdale Community College stargazers. Plus, it may seem like a party, but it's actually a class in session. And there's so much more on this edition of Maricopa Now. Now, here's your host, Kim Getz. Thanks for joining us here at Scottsdale Community College. Arizona residents share the land with some pretty dangerous desert dwellers. It's not uncommon to see a rattlesnake finding its way onto a front porch. That just might be what Mesa Community College students are looking for. Nick Spordon has the story. It's a gorgeous winter day on the Gold Canyon Mountains. The wind whispers a soothing song until... While most people would be frightened by the stirring of this rattle, Mesa Community College's Andy Baldwin stops by the Gold Canyon Fire Department to pick up his next batch of slithering serpents. I worked out an arrangement with the fire department so that whenever they would pick up a snake, they would call me and then I would pick up the snake from them. He usually picks them up that night, if not he picks them up the next morning. And once back at his house, the real fun begins. So what I'm going to do is I get all my tools together, and, and at least in a general area, I open up the bucket and pull out the snake. So this is a feisty one. But then what I do is I get a tube. I try to figure out which tube is most appropriate for that body. And I'm going to try this one. And then I get my trusty snake stick. And obviously he's not happy about this at all. Now that's what you want him to do. So then you push him up a little bit further, just, and then we're good. Once the snake is safely secured in the plastic tube, Andy snips off a scale to take back to his students. They feel something going on and they don't know what it is, but it's sort of like cutting your fingernail in that there's no blood, no nothing, but in any case, I have clipped off a rattlesnake scale. So what I now do is I'll take this tube back to Mesa Community College where my biotechnology students will process these scales. Andy then drops the snake back into the bucket, tightens the lid, and releases it back into the wild. But this story doesn't end out here in the desert. It continues on in the classroom. Andy's students take the scales and extract DNA in hopes of finding out whether or not snakes cross the road. That the road would act as a barrier to gene flow or uh, the snakes finding mates. So the genetics on one side of the road would be genetic, different from the genetics on the other side of the road. Snakes are not impeding on human territory. Um, we're impeding on them. Hopefully our research will give people a better understanding of the fact that this is their earth. The research gives students a hands-on approach where they can achieve their own successes. And then when you first figure out that, yes, I have DNA, like that is the most gratifying feeling. You're just like, oh my gosh, finally, it worked. With every strand of DNA leading to more questions, students desire to know more. Even at the end of our last class was already like, you have to create something where I can come back. I just want to know the answers to our research. We'll find out, and that's sort of the point of continuing this project in uh, Bio 107 next semester. By bringing the wildlife into the classroom, Andy is teaching his students that it's all about the journey, not the destination. Nick Spordone, reporting for Maricopa Now. The strange celestial objects called black holes are gaining popularity in both science and science fiction. The planetarium show right here at Scottsdale Community College is dispelling some of the myths people have about these astronomical phenomena. Deanne Kincaid brings us this story. 
The night sky provides endless entertainment for the amateur stargazer, but city lights can limit one's night vision ability. The planetarium at Scottsdale Community College enables astronomy students to experience the night sky as it would appear unobscured by city lights. It's a big advantage for the students to have the planetarium in the lecture classes because the concepts that they're trying to learn about the nighttime sky can be very difficult to get across in just a two-dimensional representation like in a textbook. The two basic parts of the star projector make this all possible. There is a, a what we call the star ball which projects the images of the stars onto the sky as well as the Milky Way and there's what's called the planet cage. This projects not just the planets visible to the naked eye like Mercury and Mars but also the Sun and it simulates their motion. The process of motion can be accelerated rather than waiting for planets and constellations to move in real time. By looking at the nighttime sky at different times in the historical past or even into the future, it gives the students the ability to see changes in the sky that they wouldn't normally see over the course of a single night or even over the course of their entire life. The planetarium is open to the public two Saturdays a month. Topics range from astronomy to planetary exploration. It's an opportunity to get close and personal. The dome is a 16-foot diameter dome that uh, gives us the ability to seat about 24 people at a time in a show. So it's a fairly intimate setting. When you first come in, there's enough light to sit down, but then the lights go out. Otherwise, you can't see the stars in the night sky. This month's topic is black holes. The black hole itself doesn't emit anything. Okay, So when you see these images of the jets of radiation, that's all a consequence of the material that's falling into it. The planetarium show has a different impact on each visitor. I'm taking physics in high school right now, and my dad informed me that this class was available, and I figured it was a good way to learn more. For my future, I think this will be helpful and interesting because I'm uh, considering becoming a biomedical engineer. Heather Smith enjoyed the show and says she's always been interested in astronomy and astrophysics. I will definitely be coming back again. I think Steve does a really good job of making all of these concepts understandable to a broad audience. Seven-year-old David Cohn explains how he will use black holes as a video game designer. It's like a, here's a rocket, which is you, and here's a black hole. You're trying to avoid it because if you go like, because if you go inside the black hole, you're going to have to start over. The Planetarium Show at Scottsdale Community College has something for every curious stargazer. Reporting for Maricopa Now, I'm Deanne Kincaid. These planetarium shows are free and open to the public. Get into the game with Inside Maricopa Sports. From the gridiron to track and field, the ninth inning to the winning goal, Inside Maricopa Sports brings you the excitement of Maricopa College's sports. Get up close and personal with athletes and coaches. Plus, meet the unsung heroes of the game. Join us on the field and behind the scenes on Inside Maricopa Sports. Only on MCTV, Cox Cable, Channel 115. Teaching is an incredibly rewarding experience for me. Having the opportunity to inspire, support, and challenge my students is really rewarding. And I'm very lucky to be in this profession because I love what I do. In today's world, layoffs are a fact of life. Stressful? Yes. End of the world? <laughs> no. But with a wife and two kids, I need new skills now. Discover yourself at the Maricopa Community Colleges, maricopa.edu. What I look for most in an instructor is someone who is passionate about what they teach. Um, there's nothing better than leaving a class and feeling inspired. He's a man who wears many hats, including instructor, storyteller, and singer. Rene Blatte introduces us to this original cowboy. These are the Continental Mountains, just north of Cave Creek, Arizona. Property that belongs to Marshall Trimble's sister-in-law, Mary, and her son, Walker Trimble. Marshall's brother, Danny, built the ranch. It's a place that often helps Marshall look back and remember his roots, and it sometimes inspires him 
to sing. Across a hundred campfires on a hundred rocky trails. Marshall remembers his first guitar, a $10 Gibson his brother brought home. He said it's 10 bucks. So I found 10 bucks and bought the guitar and kept that for about a year. And then he came to me later and he said, I got a Martin now for thirty dollars, <laughs> and a Martin that thing would be worth thousands of dollars today. Oh, we laugh and call them windies, and we say that they're not true. Marshall says learning to play the guitar and sing was really the best way to meet girls. So meet the Gin Mill Three, formerly called the English Lords. Marshall's first band comprised of Dan and Tom Nelson, and of course Marshall in the center. In the legends and the poems and the songs we know so well. Marshall's induction into the Gin Mill Three began in a bar in Mesa, Arizona, with a Kingston Trio song called Scotch and Soda, sung by a musician who just wasn't performing it quite right. He was butchering it, the chords. And so I walked up to him afterwards and I said, uh, you know, I can, um, I can show you some neat jazz-like chords on that and uh, it was the only jazz-like chord I knew and I said but I can show you how, how to uh, play that on the guitar and and instead of saying hey mind your own business he said you know I just learned that song I've been trying to learn to play it and he said why don't you get up on stage and play it so I went up on stage and played it and then they asked me to play a couple more and the next thing I know they invited me to join the group. There used to be a bar there. It was run by a man named Walt Rigney. Marshall's music and storytelling are an intricate part of his performances as he's entertained and educated audiences of all ages throughout the West and the country. And he still does today. This is an old favorite, uh, an old favorite song. It was written um, in Globe, Arizona in 1916 by a rodeo performer named Curly Fletcher. And it's called the Strawberry Roan because there's that old, all that old adage about there never was a horse that couldn't be rode and there never was a cowboy that couldn't be throwed. So this is how she goes. I was hanging around town just to spending my time. I was out of a job and not earning a dime. When a fella steps up, and he said, I suppose that you're a bronc rider from the looks of your clothes. Oh, Marshall's you music is as right genuine right cowboy as he is. Music that gives us insight into what cowboying is all about. And music that is sung to us from the heart. From the Golden Reef Ranch, here in the Continental Mountains, I'm Rene Blatte for Maricopa Now. I'm Cookie. Today we're going to work on some chair yoga. I'm going to give you five basic poses that you can use in your daily life to help create some flexibility, strength, agility, and just general great health. You're going to need a folding chair or a straight back chair and just make sure that whatever surface you're on is very stable and the chair, if you're using a folding chair, it is completely open. I'm also using a couple of yoga blocks right here. You can purchase these at any store. These are just foam blocks down here. Um, what I want you to do is we're going to set the base and the intention. So you're going to turn and face your chair, bringing the inner edges of your feet together, pressing down into the ground, drawing up through the knee, the front of the thigh, abdominal wall, all the way up to the chest. We're going to inhale and bring the hands into the heart, bow the head and create your intention. With an inhale, the arms will go up and over your head. You're going to lift up to the chest and just gently glance up. Take a big breath in. With your exhale, you're going to fold, bringing your hands to the chair. You're going to slowly take your feet apart about hip width. And what I want you to think about is pressing into the ground, extending your thighs straight, and setting your shoulders. So option one will be to stay here for those that really feel the stretch. If you want to make it a little more challenging, you can come down onto your forearm. Again, thighs moving back, tailbone lifting, abdominal wall stays in, relax in the shoulders. You can stay here. Or the third modification, if you're very flexible, is to reach down, bring your hands to your blocks, and allow your head to gently rest on the chair. You're gonna take another full breath here. 
And then with an exhale, I want you to look forward. I want you to soften your knees. You're gonna reach forward towards the chair. This is called chair pose. We relax the shoulders, the abdominal wall stays in, and you're really activating the back thigh and the glute muscles, reaching for the chair. With an inhale, the arms come down. You bring the arms back up and over your head. We're gonna bring the hands into heart center again. I want you to step forward with your right foot so it goes under the chair. We're gonna bow from the hip socket, reaching for the chair again, and step back with your left leg. We're extending straight through the legs, extending through the spine, taking a breath. Option one, you can stay here. Again, option two, if you want more of a challenge, you can come down onto the forearms, keeping the legs strong, abdominal wall drawn up. And option three, one more time, would be to bring the hands to the blocks, allowing the head to rest on the chair. Inhaling here, on the extension, you're gonna look forward, bring your hands back to the chair, and we're gonna step back right, we'll step forward left. We have to do this on both sides. Option one again, option two, or option three. Taking one more big breath in. On the exhale, we reach forward, coming into our final pose, we're gonna pull back with the left and the right, and we just extend both arms forward, and we stretch all the way through the entire body, stretching the upper shoulders, the back, and the hamstrings. Two full breaths. With an inhale, you're gonna bend your knees, bring the hands all the way up and over the top. Hands coming into the heart place. Set your intention, release, and that's your fit tip for today. Thank you. And Foken to Futuro connects you with the diverse people and events that make up the Maricopa Community Colleges. Share in the success of our students. Celebrate the people who make a difference. And Foken to Futuro is about the people, places, and events that have an impact on the Maricopa Colleges. Tune into and Foken to Futuro only on MCTV Cox Cable 115. For times, visit our website at maricopa.edu slash MCTV. Traditional light bulbs actually generate nine times more heat than light. Switch to energy saving bulbs. Saving energy saves you money. Their motto is go far, close to home. And the flagship college of the Maricopa Community Colleges District, Phoenix College, has given students that opportunity for the last 90 years. We have a very strong alumni organization, 22,000 members strong, and those alumni members to this day remember this institution and how it affected them and changed their lives. Today, Phoenix College serves nearly 30,000 students from over 100 countries who speak over 50 different languages. I think that's one of the finest features of the institution. Uh, we reach out to the community, we educate a very diverse student population. We also probably serve as an Hispanic serving institution because 34% of our students are Latino. While the campus remains rich in history, PC continues to evolve, meeting student, industry, and community needs. The addition of an award-winning fine arts building on campus is an inspiration to student learning. Whether their creativity is sparked within a state-of-the-art studio classroom, or outside the building. The restaurant in general. At the PC Downtown Campus, a new e-courtroom provides paralegal study students rare hands-on training. Nicholas Cooksey came to PC specifically for the bar accredited program. What they teach and how they, how they um, apply it is, I think, realistic to today's world. Um, it certainly is realistic in the classroom. So. That, to me, I think is a huge, huge opportunity. Looking down. For the last 30 years, the Interpreter Preparation Program has been the only one of its kind in Maricopa County, educating the students who become the bridge between the hearing and deaf communities. They make a big challenge for us. They say, here's the, here's the bar, and try to reach it. And then they help us along with that. That passion for student success is one of the hallmarks of the institution. The way that our faculty and staff reach out to students, they care about them. They treat them as family members. It can be seen from the classroom to the kitchen, where aspiring chefs are learning their skills in the PC Culinary Cafe. Excuse me. And onto the playing field, where the Bears are known for their nationally ranked athletic programs. I am actually really impressed with Phoenix College and the professors and the faculty and the adjunct faculty. It's pretty amazing. Because of the reputation of the college and because of our academic standing, uh, there are a number of uh, students who look for PC and come to PC. Will you be one of them? 
For more information on the 200 degree and certificate programs at Phoenix College, visit their website at phoenixcollege.edu. Let's check in with Chef Griffiths to find out what's cooking this month on Chef's Menu. Today we're going to make some pizza dough. I'm going to start with just a small bowl here for the biga. Add the water, bread flour, and just a pinch of yeast. And when I say a pinch of yeast, basically just take a knife, just about your knife tip, and sprinkle that in. So with that, I'm just going to start working it in while it's in the bowl. And I'm at the point now where I have a dough. It's important to get all the flour rehydrated in this process. I still have some dry particles here. So I'm really going to work this pre-ferment on the table. Nice smooth dough now. I'll take a plastic container, spray it. Just going to round out that dough. Place it into the container. Coat the top with oil and then flip it over. That's Cap that off and I'm going to set it in a fairly cool place in your house and we're going to let that go for 24 hours. So now we come to the actual dough mixing stage. I'm going to start by adding the water to the biga. And so this is our flavor profile for this dough. It's really going to add, make a difference in the final product. Next thing I'm going to do is add yeast, bread flour, and salt. We're going to place this on the mixer and mix it on speed one for 10 minutes. Okay, so our dough has rested for 15 minutes. It's time to portion it out now. So I'm just going to take that dough and begin to pull it towards me. I'm just going to start to round it out. Then I'm going to cut my hands over the dough and just give it a twist. Place this into the pan that I just sprayed. Just like with the biga, I'm going to flip this over the top side first and then back over. And that's going to, again, prevent this dough from drying out. So I'll cover this very tightly with saran wrap. That will go into your refrigerator for approximately 24 hours. So here is our dough that has fermented overnight. At home, you want to get your oven as hot as you can. If you have a baking stone at home, a ceramic baking stone, that is ideal for this because that will give you the nice crust. I'm going to start by dusting the bench, placing the dough, coating both sides. and start rolling it out. And I can just begin to start stretching it with my hands. So my hand is in almost like a claw shape. Putting that underneath the pizza dough. And I'm more concentrated on the outside edge of the dough to get an even thickness. So you want to be careful not to tear holes in the center. People have a tendency to want to stretch from the center and out. Remember it's the outside edge is where you're going to be working from. Now it's time to get ready to load these in the oven. I'm going to dress that board with a little bit of cornmeal. Lay that pizza on. And we'll do a traditional pepperoni, everybody's fan favorite. And we'll also do something a little out of the ordinary with some pesto and feta cheese. Make sure that cheese goes over. Pretty close to the edge. Our oven is nice and hot and I'm going to go ahead and load this onto the stone. That's going to take anywhere from 7 to 10 minutes depending on the temperature of your oven to bake. But we want to make sure that we get a nice crispy crust, nice dark color to the cheese and you'll have a, a good end product. Here's a slightly different version for a topping on a pizza. Place the pizza shell on. And here I have some basil pesto. You can either make this yourself, you can find a recipe online, or you can do like I do and just buy it. I'm going to put some fresh plum tomato on the edges. So this is a good vegetarian alternative. I have some feta cheese. And we're ready to go into the oven. You can notice that we have a nice bubbly crust on the edges. It's thin and crispy. 
And even on the bottom, due to that high heat from the ceramic stone, we have a nice crispy pizza dough. And here we have our basil, pesto, feta, and tomato pizza. Chef's Menu is brought to you by the Culinary Studies Program at Australia Mountain Community College. For today's recipe, please visit this address. Music education is growing at the Maricopa Community Colleges. It's giving those who are passionate about music a chance to study something they never thought possible. Ruben Velo shows us how students are mixing it up. They can scratch, juggle, and transform. These are the techniques DJ students are learning. This guy, though, is no amateur. Ramsey Higgins is the instructor at Scottsdale Community College's Turntablism class, a program designed for students who want to learn the ones and twos of scratching. Some of them are wanting to know the background of this. Some of them want to actually better their career. Some of them want to take up a career with this. Julian is used to playing music in front of crowds, but he wanted to do more than just push buttons. I was DJing up in San Diego um, for a couple of years. But I've never touched turntables, uh, actual like vinyl turntables, until I came here. Now I'll do it. Once students are enrolled, they learn techniques such as bouncing and are even taught the history and physics of turntablism. Like the transformer is when you're like. Amy Hartman has been scratching on turntables for just a short time and noticed a major difference in her performance. I went in here knowing absolutely nothing and I came out like being able to do scratches, juggles, threading, chirps, flares, all of that just in one semester. The, the main thing I love about this is the progression of each student and how they learn. I'm not here for, for perfection. I don't want to see per perfection right now. I want to see progression. Many working DJs also sign up for these classes in order to improve their skills. Dario Varela, a DJ at 95.1 Latino Vibe, was one of them. My ultimate goal in life is to go to Vegas and DJ Vegas, have a residency out in Vegas. I had always seen an attraction for DJing, um, just because my cousin used to do it, and I always used to see it at the clubs or whatever, and um, I was going to buy my same equipment, see how it goes from there. Although being a DJ may seem like fun and games, Varela says there's a lot more than meets the eye. There's so much work behind the actual entertainment part of it as a DJ that a lot of people don't see. So it's a lot of work, it's a lot of work. But honestly, like the, getting the opportunity to entertain people and really see a reaction out of them, like that's priceless. Uh, just hold your fader open in the middle for open speaker. Okay, now find your sound. DJ entertainment has become such a big business that instructors at Scottsdale are working to introduce the first DJ certificate accredited by a college. The DJs in Chicago are known for house music. The DJs in New York are known for hip hop. The DJs in Detroit are known for techno. And with the cooperation of the DJ community here in the Valley, we're going to be known for DJ education. For DJs like Varela, the possibility of Arizona being known for DJ education is exciting. Who can say that they get to go to a club, a uh, radio station, entertain hundreds of people, I mean thousands of people here on the radio, and get paid for it, you know? So if someone tells you that music entertainment isn't a career choice, just ask these guys, and they'll tell you differently. Reporting for Maricopa Now, Ruben Velos. In addition to Scottsdale Community College, other campuses have similar programs. For more information, visit this website. And that's our show. I hope you've enjoyed it. Be sure to stay tuned to MCTV for our great lineup of shows, including Inside Maricopa Sports and 180 View. Also, check out our website at maricopa.edu slash mctv and click on DestTube. DestTube allows you to watch this show and all of our regularly produced programs anytime you wish. Until next time, take care. Don't touch that remote. MCTV has more great programming coming right up. Join MCTV every day for Inside Maricopa Sports in Foque and Tupaturo and our daily community calendar update in the district.